dark. Yeah. Is it too dark? No. No? Fantastic. There's a cop behind you, he's folding his arms. It's great. That's good. Yeah, cops like to fold their arms. <laughs> it, 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 uh, I think it's probably relaxes them. Actually, it is a bit dark. That yeah. was a good sort of wide shot, but... So where were you on the day of the last? The day of the what? The day of the attack. Oh, the day of the attack. Let's see. That was last week? Yeah. September 11th. 8.48. I was in bed. Yeah, Were uh, any any self-respecting New Yorker just being? Um, no, I mean I I, uh, I moved the car. <coughs> I moved my car. I uh, went back to bed. And when I got up, I uh, had a message on my answering machine. Startled. Uh, apprehensive message from my mother and she wanted to know if I was okay. I thought, well that's very sweet of mom to uh, inquire about my well-being on a uh, Tuesday morning before uh, she, she knows damn well I'd be up and uh, so I, I called her. I was a little curious to know why she called me and she said uh, Oh, you're home. Good. I said, Mom, what's going on? So turn on the TV right now. So I turned on the television, and uh, it was a little bit before 10 o'clock, and uh, the uh, second plane had already hit tower number two. And uh, within uh, about 10 minutes, tower number two went down. It was the second to be hit, it was the first to go down. And within 10 minutes, smoke had traveled across the East River to Brooklyn and engulfed the uh, neighborhood. And uh, it, was, it was shocking. I, uh, I saw everything on television and I, uh, by this time, people were pretty much on top of it uh, in the media. But uh, I, I just couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the smoke billowing through the street and uh, pieces, of, large pieces of ash. And this was a, a good distance from uh, the epicenter. So I went outside. And uh, I saw people standing in the street uh, dazed, looking around. And I saw other people running uh, to get home, covering their faces. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that. I couldn't. Have, I couldn't believe what I had just seen on television. But I couldn't believe also that what I had just seen on t television had quickly managed to make its way over to my neighborhood, my very safe uh, and, and, and secure and, 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 and lovely neighborhood. Suddenly it was, it was uh, like a war zone, which it was. And um, when I went outside and looked around, I saw those pieces of ash, but I also started to notice pieces, pieces of paper wafting through the air and uh, a piece of paper uh, sort of landed uh, close to my feet and I, I bent over, picked it up and it was a piece of stationery from, uh, a blank piece of stationery from somebody in the World Trade Center. 
with their name and title and the company they work for and their uh, all their information and uh, didn't say the the, the floor I, of, of, of the building. I, I was curious uh, almost immediately. To, I, I just wondered, is this somebody somebody who worked on a floor that uh, received a direct hit? Were they below or above it? Would they have escaped? Would they have not come into work for whatever reason? Were they uh, going to be on a list at some point? And I just picked up this piece of paper with the soot on it and a uh, um, pole in the middle. And I uh, held it uh, sort of at a distance. I couldn't quite bring it close to me and hold it to me. I, 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 I sort of held it at arm's length and um, I, uh, I took it inside and I uh, checked the television one more time and uh, by this time Tower One had gone down and I decided to go to the nearest hospital and uh, donate blood and uh, that's what I did. After I donated blood, I went to the promenade in Brooklyn, uh, in Brooklyn Heights, and I, it was about three o'clock in the afternoon, and you know what, this day was a beautiful day. I, I noticed this when I moved the car in the morning, I said, Jesus, this is a beautiful, beautiful day. It was crystal clear blue sky, and uh, a very nice temperature, and just a, a it was, I was thinking to myself, you know, this is uh, the tail end of the summer and these are beautiful, beautiful weeks ahead where we can really sort of savor uh, what, what the, 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 the seasons have to offer, you know, when there's that, that turning point between summer and fall. And, and, and I, I said, you know, this, this is going to be a, a beautiful day. It, in spite of everything that was happening, it uh, remained a beautiful day, and actually for several days, it was, it, there were beautiful days in, in succession, uh, which was also um, somewhat reassuring. Uh, I, when you when you think about the rescue workers, you, you you were at least relieved to know that they were working in um, you know under quote unquote. As far as the weather is concerned, optimum conditions. And it wasn't raining, it wasn't snowing, it wasn't super, super hot and muggy. But I walked to the promenade at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and there were a lot of people just looking aghast at, at what they could see across the river at, the, uh, at, at, at Lower Manhattan. And this is a direct view of Lower Manhattan with the Brooklyn Bridge on the right in the foreground and Lower Manhattan, the beautiful Woolworth building, um, you know, a gothic, uh, one of the earliest skyscrapers in New York, which I think was for a time the tallest building in the world, I think until the, the Empire State Building. That beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, skyscraper, which was built in 1912, I think, was always in in the foreground with the World Trade Center in back of it, and I knew that that was sort of where I would find the uh, the smoke and the uh, devastation. So when I went to the promenade and I looked past the Woolworth Building and saw this column of smoke, I I I, I was I was studying it very carefully, and I was looking for what I thought would be the remnants of the World Trade Center. I thought, you know, there had to be like 30 or 40 stories or 50 stories of something of the World Trade Center standing. But, so when I'm looking at this smoke, 
and I'm, I'm squinting my eyes and I'm saying, no wait, I've got to see, where is this, where is the World Trade Center? So I turned to somebody next to me and um, I said, can you see it? And, and he looked at me and he said, they're gone. Uh, it's, it didn't compute, it couldn't, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, something, that, it was incomprehensible really. How could the World Trade Center be gone? A 110 story building just disappear, how is that possible? And, and, and I kept looking through the smoke and this guy, when I looked at him and he said to me, they're gone, I looked back and I still was uncomprehending, I couldn't believe it and, uh, you know, Sure enough, they were gone. They were gone and uh, just imploded. The things came down with such force that for the last eight days, no one has been found. Nobody has been uh, there. There are very, very few remnants. Of, uh, well, you know what? Let me check that. There are probably a lot of remnants of human life, but nothing whole and nothing resembling a human. Just pieces of humans, if, if at all. And at this point, with the fires that have been raging in these underground infernos, one has very little hope at this point. Probably, you know, at this point, today, Friday, the 21st of September. I think it's all dawning on us that there are 6,300 or so people pulverized and uh, or vaporized and we're breathing them right now tonight we're breathing the particles of the people that that died and uh, it's it's a sweet smell right now before when we entered this area, it had a bitter sort of uh, sharp smell, but right now it's it's smelling, now that I've gotten used to it, it's uh, rather a sweet smell. Right, straight up that way? Yeah.